did it error and then that as the time goes on. So how do we use this uh, how do we use this NLMS process for a channel estimation? Well you can see it here. Again we have the two transit signals going through these four channels, adding the noise and then we get the two receive signals. So what we do is that we take the two transit signals we want to use to we put them here, the two inputs to the filter width. And then we take the output and we compare it with the channel. With the receive signal that we are interested in. So, for example, we put U1 and U2 in the two filter ways, and we, we use the reference signal we use V1. And so, we say that U1 convolved with some kind of filter added with U2 convolved with some kind of filter is going to be close to receive signal 1. So, here, if you look at the diagram, is U1 convolved with H1 plus V2 combined with H12 plus some noise V1. So we use this instead of filter kind of a approximate or estimate H11 and H12 for that example. So that is the basic idea behind this. So for the error that we get in this case, how do we know whether the error is because H11 is off or H12, our estimation for H12 is off? The reason why we can do this is again because of our dominality of the two pilots. Next, we will be looking at the third approach, which is the least squares channel estimation uh, approach. So again, what, it, what this does is it formulates our environment as an equation here. This D1 and D2 is kind of a, a convolution matrix. It represents convolutions between the pilots and the channel. And this R day again is the receive signal. As you can see, there's no moisture here, so it's kind of approximate in nature. Also, we don't account for the, the data and the data of the other physicists we don't know We then we then use the least squares uh, mathematical method to estimate channel HJ1 and HJ2. It is uh, good to note here about the meaning of this method is that we don't really require for uh, a good scrambling code, a good uh, asynchronized code as the as a correlator based approach required. Uh, All we need is that this this matrix is invertible. The last method is the counter channel estimation method. And this one, like the NLMS, I think is more uh, some kind of uh, algorithm or process. And this process is called the counter process. For the counter process. And so what we have is we have two equations, two main equations. Actually. We have an observation equation, uh, a state equation, and an observation equation. And by plugging in the parameters correctly, we can estimate uh, the channel. So, how do we compare the methods? Well, we see that even if we use these methods, our results are not really very uh, accurate. As you can see here, let's look at this correlator based approach. Two channel is given by blue curve. You can see our estimate channel is this black dotted curve. You see it has a lot of oscillations. It may even have some kind of delay. And the amplitude may be a little off. And so we see from these curves that we need to tune. We need to tune our estimates. We need to modify our estimates slightly before we can compare it, before we can see which one is best. So how can we do this? Well, we use two metrics. One is EBM and one is BER. EBM stands for error vector magnitude, and a BR stands for the error rate. The EBM, basically we look at the two curves, our true channel and our estimate channel. We kind of look at the difference between them over the whole curve. That's that metric. The second metric is a bit error rate. We take our estimate and we use it, the channel estimate, we use it for data detection. And then we get resulting bit error rate. Now, our EBM is relatively efficient compared with the bare error rate. The bare rate, you need to use this whole data detection uh, algorithm. And so we will post to the EBM first and then the bare error rate. But what kind of uh, bit error rate minimum do we have? Basically, if we find 
find a set of tuning parameters to tune our estimate. Will this, will this, this set of tuning parameters still be good for a different channel? Uh, let's say for a few seconds later. So we look at two types of sensitivity. One is to, if we change the tuning parameters a little bit, will we get a small change in bit error rate? But we just change it a little bit, the then bit error rate skyrockets or it drops. The second one is, if we wait a little bit of time, if we get a different channel, slightly different channel, will we get a small change in bit error rate with the same tuning parameters? Or will the, again, the, the, the bit error rate minimum will be different? We will, we will jump our bit error rate, jump drastically. So we find out that uh, numerically, reasonably so, we do have these uh, uh, insensitivity. So let's look at the comparison. Using this comparison methodology, let's actually compare. Thank you. Let's actually compare the uh, amendments. So here's the curve. This is a PA30. is uh, stands for uh, a vehicle or mobile that's moving at 30 kilometers per hour. It's a relatively slow moving, and we use this common data detection method uh, to get our bit error rate result. As you can see here. The channel is given by the blue dotted curve and the channel estimates, uh, the, the bit error rate curves corresponding to the channel estimates are given by these colored curves. So you can see that they're all pretty much the same. We have no, no improvement and no difference within the methods. But what about for VA250? For a vehicle that is moving at 250 kilometers per hour, so much faster than the vehicle, we see again the blue dotted lines of the channel channel, and these are the channel estimates. So if you look here, the correlator based approach is given by the red curve, the red in the circle, and the least curve is given by the purple and the cross. You see that there is some improvement here of the least square method. So in conclusion, we want to compare some new developed uh, channel estimation methods with this existing popular correlator based approach. <coughs> We uh, realized that we needed to tune the estimates before we could compare them. Tune the estimates resulting from these different methods. So we have a certain proposal, a certain comparison methodology, means the EPM versus is relatively efficient and a bit error rate. To find the tuning parameters, we then apply the tuning parameters to our channel estimates. We then use these channel estimates, these uh, tuned channel estimates, Find a bit error rate. We find that there's no real difference between the methods for the slower varying channel, but for the faster varying channel, the faster mobile speed. Uh, we find that the least square method does show some improvement over the correlated uh, basic approach. Are there any questions?